This week I had planned on reviewing the absolute dumpster fire train wreck garbage pile of a movie, The Tomorrow War, but instead let's take a few minutes to remember and discuss a titan of Hollywood cinema who sadly passed away on Monday. Richard Donner was one of the most influential directors in movie history, whether you know it or not. While his last time behind the camera was in 2006, his legacy is undeniable and I'm heartbroken that he's gone. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Before we get started, click on that red subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you know whenever I post a new piece of content. Possible for two things to be true at the same time. First, the last several movies that Richard Donner directed weren't all that good. Timeline was straight up horrible and nobody remembers 16 blocks. Second, between 1978 and 1982, Richard Donner directed two of my all-time favorite films. Donner had a fairly broad body of work, with Lethal Weapon turning the buddy cop genre on its head, and The Omen being a damn good horror flick. Not to crap on those movies, but I want to spend the bulk of my time today paying tribute to Donner's two most important works. 1978's Superman the movie is the single most influential comic book movie ever made, and it's not even all that close. Before Superman, superhero films were cheesy schlock, and Donner had to fight tooth and nail against his own producers in order to make the movie that he wanted to make, a movie that would be taken seriously. Donner had the foresight to see something that wasn't there, a future where both critics and audiences sat in a theater, enraptured by a man catching a falling helicopter, racing a speeding train, and saving the world from a psychotic madman. The vision came to life beautifully, and Superman was a box office juggernaut, Christopher Reeve became a household name, and comic book films emerged from the shadows and immediately became a viable genre. Without Superman, we have no Batman, no Spider-Man, and no Marvel Cinematic Universe. In fact, Donner would go on to produce the X-Men films in the 2000s, and there's no way in hell that series would see the light of day without Donner paving the way 22 years earlier. As for the MCU, there's a similar link with Marvel head honcho Kevin Feige serving as an intern for Donner's production company in his earliest years. The first two Superman movies were filmed back to back, but Donner was fired during production on the second as the producers wanted a more goofy and silly take on the Man of Steel. Richard Lester was brought in to make broad changes and Superman 2 suffered as a result. While it's not a bad movie by any stretch of the imagination, it was the beginning of the deterioration of the franchise. Superman 3 and Superman 4 The Quest for Peace are not remembered fondly, with the former being a tonal mess and the latter being among the very worst movies ever made. A little inside baseball here, but if you want to see the best version of Superman 2, might I suggest you stop what you're doing right now and watch the Richard Donner cut because it's awesome. Despite all of the corporate politics and meddling, everything somehow came together in order to bring Superman the movie to life. The casting of Reeve, Kidder, Hackman, Cooper, and Brando. The incredible music from John Williams, the revolutionary at the time special effects, and the breathtakingly deep story. All of these things don't coalesce without Donner basically telling Alexander and Ilya Salkind to go pound sand and then doing things his own way. Richard Donner was willing to risk his entire career in order to prove a man could fly, and we are all the better for it. The 1980s were a great decade for cinema. Star Wars hit its stride, John Hughes movies like Ferris Bueller's Day Off and The Breakfast Club told stories of misguided youth, and the list of movies from that decade is remarkable. The Indiana Jones trilogy, Die Hard, The Terminator, Aliens, Gremlins, Batman, Predator, Blade Runner, Labyrinth, Red Dawn, Top Gun, E.T., Beetlejuice, Back to the Future, Ghostbusters. That's a heck of a list. And as great as all those movies are, perhaps no movie better captures everything about that decade than Richard Donner's 1985 classic, the Goonies. Instantly quotable, deeply sentimental, and surprisingly funny, The Goonies doesn't just somehow wrap everything up about that decade into a fun story with amazing characters. It has some of the most iconic moments in movie history. Chunk confessing his life story, Brand stealing the pink bicycle, Mouth butchering his Spanish translation to scare the housekeeper, everything about the Fratellis, the Jeep chase introduction and the fleeing from the jail, the truffle shuffle, Troy's General Douchebaggery, One-Eyed Willie's Pirate Ship, Chunk's Friendship with Sloth, Mikey's heartbreaking monologue in The Wishing Well. While Steven Spielberg was heavily involved with production on The Goonies and his influencers are obvious, Donner was the director responsible for bringing the project to the screen. It didn't have the same broad-reaching influence like Superman, it didn't jumpstart Donner's career like The Omen, 
and The Goonies didn't even manage to crack the top 50 grossing movies of the decade. That said, its impact on the landscape of 80s cinema is well understood by anyone who grew up in the 80s or 90s. It's a movie that's always in the discussion, and it's still talked about, and it's left an enduring legacy in its wake. Richard Donner's contributions to cinema are not small. He doesn't have the same broad catalog like Coppola, Spielberg, or Kubrick, but you can see his influences everywhere you look. When Heath Ledger's Joker smashes a man's face into a pencil, that doesn't happen without Richard Donner. When Hugh Jackman's Logan takes his last breath, that doesn't happen without Richard Donner. When Tobey Maguire's Peter Parker turns around to see MJ instantly realize that he is Spider-Man, that doesn't happen without Richard Donner. And when Tony Stark declares, I am Iron Man and snaps his fingers, that doesn't happen without Richard Donner. He's not the most acclaimed director in history, and he's not even a household name. If you ask the vast majority of Americans who Richard Donner is, they don't know. That's okay, I guess. He hadn't been active for almost two decades, so it makes a little bit of sense. But if you understand history, and if you understand movies, you understand that without Richard Donner, your entire knowledge of today's pop culture would be very, very, very different. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please consider subscribing. You can also like and share the video since that tells YouTube it's worth promoting. Hit me up down in the comments, tell me what you think about Richard Donner's contributions to cinema history, and I'll see you next Wednesday at 9 a.m.